Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Even Stevens Ranked Podcast, the podcast for all things Even Stevens. I'm Brittany Butler. I'm Ethan Brim. And today we have a very special guest with us for another amazing cast and crew interview. Uh, this is our first Stevens on the podcast, oh. which is amazing. Yeah. Uh, this is a man that you have probably seen in everything ever, aside from even Stevens as well, at some point. Mr. Tom Virtue, a.k.a. Steve Stevens. How are you today? Steve Stevens. Hey, how are you guys? Pretty good. <laughs> we're doing good. Good. Of course we're doing good. We're talking yeah. to you. <laughs> it's a pretty good day. Definitely. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess we can just dive right into it. Sure. We got to start from the beginning. Um, I was born in... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've had such a long and busy career, judging from your IMDb page, at least. It is very impressive. Uh, and as I've said, you've popped up everywhere over the years on so many TV shows and movies. So yeah, we got to go back to the beginning of all of that. Okay. You know, how did you get into the entertainment industry and acting? First interest in uh, even in elementary school. I, I did mm. a, this is, you know, right near you in Needham, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. I went, I played uh, Barnacle Bill the Sailor in second grade. I was the shortest kid in my grade. And then another guy who was really tall played uh, a woman. And at the end of the sketch, it's, who's that knocking at my door? Who's that? I, I, it's me. I'm home from the sea, says Barnacle Bill. And uh, then he put me on his shoulder and carried me out. So it was oh. like the big woman carrying the, the the little guy out at the end. Got a huge <laughs> laugh. And then I said, oh, I like this. So that was the start. <laughs> I love how you can remember that so clearly and the song as well. <laughs> yeah, I do remember it. It's funny. That's how you know it was an important moment in your life. I guess so. I remember it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, always, you know, did in between sports i was always doing uh, school shows and then i went to northwestern university to study theater and uh didn't really like the first class i took i said oh we're going to be doing playing trees for a year and this kind of stuff and uh, so i became a radio television filmmaker with an interest because i had done it in high school with some filmmaking they had big video cameras back then and, uh but we used to make uh, small video films. You know, you, it wasn't as easy as your iPhone. Mm. Um, after college, I uh, went to New York City and started doing commercials. And uh, mm. for the first 10 years of my career, I, I was uh, traveling between New York, Chicago, and L.A. doing really small stuff. Although I did Second City for a little while in Chicago mm. and improv in, in Chicago. Practical Theater, which was uh, came out of Northwestern. Brad Hall and Julia Louie Julia Louie Dreyfus. She's gonna love that. <laughs> um, well, you know, started that kind of thing there, and Paul Barras. Yeah. Then eventually, in 1988, I went to California, and after I was do working as a tow truck dispatcher at night, but we were putting together a sketch show. A bunch of people who had been in other sketch shows. We pooled all our our sketches together, and the show was a, a big success. We were all about 29 or 30. Mm. And uh, that kind of launched launched me, and it launched uh, a bunch of people into writing. You know, one guy wrote for Jay Leno's show for years. Another guy mm. writes for Buffy and whatever. So everyone came out of that cast with something because it was a successful show. Out of that show, the first television thing I did was Roseanne. Mm. The casting mm. director uh, came from Roseanne to see someone else, actually, and uh, mm. said, well, I'm going to get you an agent. He was great. From there, just everything else took off, or then uh, I was a working actor, and um, after that, Bonnie Hunt's a friend of mine who I'd known from mm -hmm. Chicago, mm -hmm. and I'd probably have no career if it wasn't for her. She wow. um, she almost single handedly got me through the network process of um, getting on a show, mm. and and I did another show for her where I was part of the package. I didn't even have to audition. <laughs> Wow, that's cool. Yeah, she was great. She worked with. She just wanted to work with certain people who she knew. Uh, she <laughs> she just really went to bat for me, and and uh, you know really believed in me much more than I did in myself at wow. that time. And and you know throughout, she's been a really a, a big uh, you know source of my wow. career path. See, that's so. nice. You never know these things. I watched Cheaper by the Dozen all the time as a kid, and I never knew this information. There you so, go. 
you learn something new every day. Yeah. Where was your improv uh, troupe performing at? We were performing at the Tamarin Theater, which okay. was part theater and by night and auto insurance company by day. Of course. I, I, <laughs> it was that kind of place. I'm not surprised. Yeah. But it was really a good show. We really did some good sketches. Yeah. And then uh, around 99, you know, I had been just working as an actor and I auditioned for Even Stevens at that time. The next question, actually, yeah, was how did you land that audition? Because it was originally Spivey's kid brother. Right. Um, it, it wasn't even Steven. So how did that just fall into your lap? Did you Were you just like going out on auditions and that happened to be one of them? Or? Yeah. I'm just remembering this, that um, uh, I went up. It was just, just an audition to go up for. And then I got there and there were hundreds of guys there. Well, not hundreds, mm. but say 50 guys. And one of the yeah. guys in the room was Tony Dow, who had been the brother on Leave it to Beaver. Okay. And I thought I might as well leave now because that's perfect casting. You know, he was on a kid show that I watched the way you guys watched Even Stevens. Yeah. And it's right. just a natural that he would be the father on this show. Wow. Mm. Um, then I went into the audition and there was a, I believe she was the assistant casting director. I don't think the first time I went that, uh, yeah, it was Stacy Pianco was, uh, was casting. And I did the scene and I said, Hey, could I play this a little different? You know, instead of a Disney dad, who's sweet, you know, my father's mm -hmm. kind of an intense guy who, you know, he has a, a, a very quick fuse and, you know, and she goes, yeah, why not? Like do it like that. And I did. So it was maybe an uncharacteristic, you know, how he, Steve, got to be in the show you know he he certainly you know had not a temper but he was volatile you know yeah <laughs> definitely so um but that was the start of it i said hey could i play it like that instead yeah. and i think that got me back for the callback that's and, incredible uh, yeah the callback was me and one other guy and um he i would have thought he was better for the show because he was yeah. a big football player type it seemed to fit the script better um, right. But I did a little improv. They asked me to do improv. Okay. All those guys were all there. Some Disney executives. Um, and, um, Sean was there and, uh, mm -hmm. Dearborn was there. And I, here's another thing that might've helped is I had done Dearborn's, a, a guest on Dearborn's, uh, show, uh, uh Alex, Alex Mack. Mack. Yeah. I saw yeah. that on the IMDb. Yeah. I played a guy. Yeah. It was a big Lou uh, again. Totally miscasting. It should have been the same guy who I did, uh, who I auditioned against, and even Stevens playing that role too. <laughs> I, I I think during the improv, I I had more fun, and I was mm. the, I showed a a side that could be an interesting part of that character. Uh, I was okay. a little stiff and nervous during the um, during on the scripted part, mm -hmm. you know, because it was right. kind of coming down to the wire. Mm -hmm. And I remember the guy saying, you know, the good news is when you do this show. It tends to go three seasons. The bad news mm. is it tends to go three seasons. And I said, <laughs> if it goes beyond one show, it's really good for me. <laughs> so, yeah. right. you know, like one episode. Because mm -hmm. that's what I generally do. Yeah, see, see, that's interesting how you're like remembering that you had to do improv and all this stuff. Because I was wondering how different the audition process is coming into the show as an adult, like auditioning as a parent, as opposed to what the kids had to go through. Like, did you ever have to do chemistry reads with the kids or they just threw you into the mix? No, but I remember I remember uh, Gary Marsh um, when we were getting introduced uh, for, at the beginning of the show. I think it was for Disney people. I had done a um, some TV movies uh, under wraps, mm -hmm. and um, I love under wraps. Oh, do you really? Yeah, I love that movie. Yeah, yeah. My friend Greg Beeman had uh, directed it. I, I, you know, that was the first yeah. thing. I, that's where where I really met him, and um, because of that, he said, "You know what? You're my good luck charm." Even though I just did this one little thing in it, uh, so he put me in little parts in like four other Disney movies. Yeah, very yeah. little parts. So that helped me too. Like I was at Gary Marsh introduced me at uh, as a member of the Disney family at that. Wow. Okay. Uh, you know, even though I'd just done these little bit things, mm -hmm. but that probably helped me too, that I'd work for Disney. Yeah. That was another later on. One of the questions I had was like with those other DCOMs you were in that if you even had to audition for those or if Disney just called on you <laughs> to be like, yeah. yeah, just be in these other things. I think the first one I did audition and then the other ones, because they were so, 
the the parts were so uh, small, uh, they, uh, you know, I, I was just given those. However, later, I think I did one, um, oh, what was that one? Read It and Weep? Read It and Weep. Right. You were the father, like you had a, you were like, you owned a pizza shop or something and correct. And it was like seaweed pizza ended up being the bestseller or something weird like that. <laughs> right. And I did have to go in on that. I had to go in okay. and the director of that movie was Paul Hohen. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So heavy he, hitter. Yeah. 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 And he, you know, I had worked with him on even Stevens. He might've even mm-hmm. done that Alex Mack episode. I'm not sure. Huh. But, um, yeah, he said, I could see they were the casting people were wincing a little that I had the grayer hair and maybe too old mm. for the dad. And so what they did was um, dye my hair. And Paul, I think, went to bat for me because he said, look, there, there's a certain acting style that these Disney dads require. And he, ha- you know, mm. he knows that. Yeah. And uh, so he sold it. But uh, it made me brown haired for that half a year <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of funny with steve stevens was there any sort of backstory that you had handed to you or that you made in your head kind of or because i know i was in a play once and i had a minor character but they still gave me like a long backstory i don't know if they did that with some of the characters on even stevens or i was always worried about getting let go from the show in the mm. first I'd say first 10 episodes. Really? Once Family mm. Picnic, Family Picnic, I thought, oh, well, okay, this is good. But then a couple of episodes later, Donna and I weren't in them again. Yeah. And mm. I thought, oh, oh, you know, my deal was that I only had 17 out of 21 shows in a season. Mm-hmm. But I mm. thought they're gonna, they could easily get rid of my character here. You know, like, why not just Twitty and, you know, even George Bell. I said, this guy has more to do than the father. <laughs> uh, you know, he played the principal. <laughs> And I didn't really know how to go at it. You know, it, it felt at the beginning that I go, okay, I'm going to play a standard family show dad. Then I remember on the 11th, I, it was, uh, what was that one? It was the one with the bed. Easy, Easy way. way. Easy way, right. I finally came up in that uh, arcade to Sean and had the courage to go, Sean, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I have not even known how to play this guy, uh, you know, or what he is. And I said, yeah. am I the crazy dad? And Lewis is the wise kid or is Lewis the crazy kid and I'm the wise dad? I mean, how should I be playing it? And he just thought for a second and said, all right, if he's the crazy kid, you're the wise dad. If he's the wise kid, you're the crazy dad. Yeah. So did I say that right? That it was the, it like yeah, the toe it's off. Yeah. Funny. It's an huh. interesting way to think about it. Yeah. yeah. Just play the opposite of what he does. You know, and, uh, and, and I go, works, okay, I think, really that was well. the character. Yeah, yeah. yeah that became the And character. it was funny because uh, speaking of Easy Way, someone had asked a sarcastic question. They asked if you've ever been on a big shiny hog. Is, oh, I was on. Uh, uh, which from yeah, that episode yeah. was oh, one of yeah. those really <laughs> loud lines that <laughs> that, I, that yeah. I put into one of, when we talked yeah. about that episode. I haven't seen a lot of those episodes now in 20 years, but um, I did take a look at them just because I've been listening to your podcast. Thank you. You know, I'm a fan of your podcast. Thank I, uh, you. What happened was, I, you guys do a great job. You do a great Thank job. Thank you I so appreciate much. It. Thank you. I went, I went on a ranked site to look at this, the films of uh, Martin Scorsese ranked. And yeah. then I said, oh, I wonder if they rank even Stevens. And then I found your <laughs> podcast because of that. What so. a wonderful random thought yes. to have. <laughs> it led us here. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So and I lo- I've loved the podcast. So it's it's fun, to, really fun to hear something that I was a part of and that you guys are so enthusiastic about. Yeah, Aww. we are definitely enthusiastic about it. Uh, yes, <laughs> that well, would be and, the word. And now on Disney Plus, I don't know if you have Disney Plus, but um, all of the whole series is on there. Yeah, we. Mm-hmm. My wife has a Verizon, so uh, it's free, it's, right, for the yeah. first year yeah. or something. First first year mm-hmm. or something. That's awesome. So yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah. So I mean, I guess. We kind of maybe covered this, but when you first got the script, what did you think of it? Was it just like another, like, ah, eh, this is just going to be a kid's show? Did you have, did you not really think anything of it, that it would be what it is? Or maybe did it start coming together with you as soon as you started working with the rest of the cast? Uh, maybe you started realizing it had like a special quality. That question was from Logan. So just got to say. Okay, that. Logan. I was just thrilled to have a job. So yeah. I almost wouldn't, I don't even judge 
things, really. Mm-hmm. I, you know, mm-hmm. I'll just, I go, I'm happy to be working. And I'll, I'll give you more. Is that, you know, I did really love the way um, uh, Matt Dearborn has a certain writing style where he has a certain turn of phrase yeah. uh, mm. that I just really like. He, I just remember in um, Devil Mountain when he's saying uh, about his sister, I'm eating those nachos, and he yeah. goes, uh, you know, my sister went there. It's, I, I forgot yep. what, Now I forgot what the line was, but my sister went there. They have a really good program. Something like that. Yep. It's just yeah. so, so – <laughs> the, the way he does those things, and there was that in the pilot. And mm. um, so I felt good about that. And then I remember being with Shia on the first day. And he was reading the script. First of all, he was reading Variety, like some 60-year-old vaudevillian. Uh, <laughs> and then he kind of put down the script and just goes, you know, if this isn't a hit, we suck. <laughs> so out of this little 13-year-old. And uh, he, yeah, it's just he loved the script. And, wh- and when I saw him, too, I just said, wow, you know, like this kid has something special. Mm. You know, it's beyond yeah. just a kid on, on a – on a family show, he just has, you know, some really special gift that only certain people like Dakota Fanning, you know, they come yeah. very right. rarely where, where you have, you know, an exceptional, there's, a, it's almost like an adult is in a child's body, a really right. seasoned adult comedian in a, in a child's mm-hmm. body. Mm. Was that kind of like the unspoken feeling among other, uh, at least maybe the adults on the cast or, or like everyone could kind of tell that Shia was going to skyrocket after this? I think so. I think so. I remember <laughs> one guy saying too, they go, I don't know if Shia is going to, you know, it's funny. I almost predicted his behavior that was going to yeah. come because mm. of whether he goes there or whether he becomes a huge success, both of which has happened. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I mean, that kind of goes into the the next two questions. Um, so Greg on Instagram uh, wanted to know, but I'm sure everyone wants to know as well, um, what was the dynamic like on set, especially among those of you that were playing the Stevens family specifically? A really harmonious, and um, I think we, we really clicked. It was... Still, for me, my favorite my favorite job that I've ever had. Really? Okay. Yeah. That's a common thread yeah. so far. Everyone we've talked right? to said, yeah. I knew at the end, when it was ending, I said it may never get this good again. Yeah. And mm. there have been things where I've acted that I'm proud of. Like some of some Steve's acting, or my acting as Steve, I kind of go, oh, I wish I had taken it down 10 decibels. <laughs> really? Oh, <laughs> I do not. But, uh, I love, we love it. I we love, love how it. extra yes. you are sometimes. Well, yeah, so extra. Good. That's the word for it. But I, yeah. I really like when I'm not extra. You know, like yeah. when I've looked <laughs> back on it and occasionally I uh, I was given direction to like take it down or uh, – mm-hmm. uh, mm. and uh, I really like those moments. I, I, there was – that for me was in the um, – like when I saw uh, the sausage episode again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there was some smaller stuff in there. Even though I'm big and 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 my uh, anger seemed more, or, or you know my res, uh, my uh, annoyance at Lewis about the stuff seemed really legit, ver- very uh, realized yeah. in that yeah. rather than manufactured. It, yeah, I just watched Uncle Chuck, the episode Uncle Chuck. Um, oh yeah, which is probably that or the sausage episode. My favorite performances by you. I just love how you can go from so wacky and then you can rein it in and just be so serious and believable as a father, especially, uh, I mean, you really got to um, flex your dramatic chops in Uncle Chuck, I think. Yeah, I forgot about that. Mm. You know, uh, it was fun too because I just got off the phone before talking to you guys with Richard Kind oh, just nice. because yeah. it was an arbitrary call, but he's – one of my oldest friends in show business. Oh, wow. We were we were roommates right out of college together. Really amazing. Uh, and <laughs> you would, it, uh, most people thought uh, who knew us and who would would even know about even Stevens or had kids or whatever, said, "Oh, you got Rich on the show as your brother." It's absurd that he's my brother. I mean, yeah. we couldn't be more <laughs> physically, you know. Uh, but um, Dearborn was a really good friend of Rich's, and he mm. wanted Rich on the show, and that's yeah. how that happened. He, so, uh, but I mean, casting us as brothers is, is just 
so fun. I feel like that's how a lot of things worked on the show. It seemed like a lot of people were friends before going into it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that might have had something to do with how well everything turned out. I, th- I think that works. It's nice when that happens. Sometimes when you're on the outside of it, you go, oh, this is nepotism. But yeah, I mean, why not? If if you know there's going to be good chemistry or yeah. a good yeah yeah a good mood on a set because you know someone uh, yeah and then that episode I remember that was really nice that uh, on Uncle Chuck just as from a writing standpoint when the father comes at the end to to the rescue yeah didn't he come in like in a minivan yep. his that mini- stupid yes, minivan and that's he, one of my favorite lines because it's so specific instead of saying get in you say Get in the minivan. (laughs) The minivan. The same minivan. Yeah. Because you just got it. It was brand new. You loved the minivan. Yeah. And then the family's all disappointed. (laughs) But that was a that was a big episode and uh, a tough tough one for the director. You know, it had it was a lot to do. Ken Seisler, I had worked with him before, and he done like I've done sketches for him on live television shows, and so a lot of times a director will come in and they go, I have a lot of ideas for you know a neat shot like this and then the clock starts ticking and you've only got the actors for so long and then you're you're turning to the director of photography going how can we make shortcuts on this you know they want to throw <laughs> all their big ideas out to just get the day done you know yeah uh, but the episode mm-hmm. turned out great I yeah think. one of yeah. my favorite lines from that episode is when lewis you say uncle chuck's not your dad i am and then lewis says yeah too bad and you said what did you say and he says i, I said, said foo clad, clad. <laughs> and you said foo clad it was just a, like, so yep, bizarre uh yeah. it, it, it 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 in a way didn't fit the tone right there but it was so perfect and that's that's probably my favorite <laughs> line from that episode that was great i, I remember yeah. uh rinsler and warren coming up and say you know what we we want to have your head explode in this thing like yeah that oh, would do that yeah. <laughs> And that was cool that they did that. Yeah, you know, yeah, we yeah that, that's explore. surreal stuff that you've probably heard us talk about. How they'll throw that stuff in. It's just yeah. like, yeah, let's explode your head. Sure, that's it. And <laughs> then right on that. to another scene. Yep. Yeah. Were there oh plans to bring Uncle Chuck back in another episode or anything like that? I don't know. I don't know that there that there were, but uh, yeah, that was fun. And then Rich, I still always remember. Rich, Rich taught me a big lesson. Is you know. I've lived with Rich, and he will make you into Felix Unger. Because do you know who Felix Unger is on The yeah. Odd Couple? Yeah. The, the neat. I'm not a neatnik at all. Yeah. But when you live with Rich, you you turn into a neatnik because. Uh, <laughs> oh, so gosh. I remember go going into his room afterwards, you know, and the wardrobe people saying, "Oh, you know, they had to pick up all the stuff." Yeah. And so it's now kind I, of in character then. It because, is. Uh, Chuck was is. making a mess of your house. <laughs> Rich will kill me for saying this stuff, but. But now I always, you know, no matter if if I do a bad job acting, I always put my wardrobe back on the hooks and back on the mm. hangers just so at least I've done that right when I leave a set. Yeah, that's so, good. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I guess getting back to the family dynamic thing again, of course, so many people want to know. I mean, we've kind of touched on it a little bit, but how was working with Shia specifically? Um, like what was your relationship like on set, maybe even offset? Mm-hmm. I just, uh, you know, I just uh, felt like I was always working with, you know, he had a lot of respect for his elders mm-hmm. and I'm thinking at the same time, I have so much respect for you because I think you're 10 times the actor I am. I didn't say that to him, but that's mm-hmm. how I felt wow. about it. Interesting. I just thought he, you know, has a certain genius as a, in comedy. As a, I'm, I'm very surprised that he hasn't gone on to do comedy because right. I thought he was going to be the next Jim Carrey or mm-hmm. yeah. Will Ferrell or whoever that would be. I said, that's yeah. where he's going. He's going to be the number one comedy guy. Yeah. Um, so I loved working with him. I, I thought, you know, he's a very lovable and loving guy. Mm-hmm. And um, I always admired that he and... Uh, he and AJ were, they, you know, they were into taking their classes when they were doing and talking about ideas. He was running off every weekend to make films. Uh, mm. So he's just, you know, full of full of creativity. And, like, you know, the fact that in Honey Boy now he's taken his life and put it on screen. Yeah. And, yes. you know, he and it's an it's already an award winning mm-hmm. screenplay, you know, from the Hollywood uh 
award and uh you know he's just yeah. just full of creativity so uh, how did i like working with him probably my favorite actor i've ever worked with yeah. my favorite actor to work with oh that's so sweet yeah i'm getting choked up yeah oh yeah. oh god yeah I, really and, I know like and, and he had some really beautiful nods to you in uh, honey boy too uh, i mean he named his um the with that uh big brother character he named him tom oh, and uh yeah. and then you were also portrayed on i don't know if you've seen honey boy yet but um, yeah i have yeah I have. and you were portrayed in in there too as well um yeah yeah mm-hmm. i think he was he was showing it really when i watched that scene it was more about the disney writing the the c- conception of a disney father not really yeah. just me you know me in a way as a shell but really the mm-hmm. writers the whole institution of Disney and what the message they're sending out versus the message of what's going on in his real life back in that motel. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's like true, that too. was what that scene meant to me. Yeah. It kind of felt like Shia wrote it to sort of show Otis feeling love from his TV dad in this fictional world that mm-hmm. he wasn't getting from his real dad. Yeah. Um, and then I looked up the script um, and in the script it actually Uh, says, uh, the TV dad puts his arm on Otis's shoulder, and then the TV dad's line is, I love you, Jeff. I love you more than words can say. And then it says, and Otis is feeling far more than what this kid's show requires. Oh, wow. Um, From when the TV father said that. And like as when I was watching it, as soon as the father said that, I immediately started thinking of like every single father son moment between Lewis and Steve Same here, on the yeah. show, yeah. and I started thinking of what or how much those scenes might have actually meant to Shia mm. back then. Um, and of course, you know, I'm thinking right away episodes like Family Picnic and Uncle Chuck, and especially the Thomas Grabowski yeah. affair. Oh as yeah, well, there was that. Was one. That's one. another good episode. Yeah. And you know what I liked? My favorite one looking back, um, and only your mother, Jeannie, is smart enough to put it on her top ten list, uh, is, uh, is uh, Raiders of the Lost Sausage, yeah. mm-hmm. which I thought was ridiculous when I read it. And it was uh, yeah. written by two, two writers who really weren't on staff. They were more – they were assisting and, and uh, you know, inter- beyond interns, but they mm-hmm. were uh, – they were not the main staff, and I thought it was silly, you know, on paper. Mm-hmm. But uh, we had uh, Fred Savage as our director, That's and right. um, yeah. well, another another one of those incredible kid actors who, you know, yeah. And now I've been directed by him, not only here but elsewhere. He is such a pro. He's mm-hmm. and he's a nice man, really nice man. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but anyway, he directed and. So I'll, I'll say that one I really like because here I am working with Shia more than usual. Mm-hmm. Fred, uh, you know, I thought this script was silly and Fred was going, I'm going, he goes, I think you'd be really mad here. The kid put a hole in the wall. And I go, Fred, I don't want to do the yelling. Like, I'm, you know, do I have to do this? yelling? He goes, the kid put a hole in the wall. But, you know, come from a real place. How would you be if, yeah. if you saw your son put a hole in the wall? And I look back at that episode and my acting is... It's the perfect blend of extra to mm-hmm. me and but real, yeah. you know, where yeah. it's not so manufactured as some of the stuff. Uh, when I look back at it, I, my, by the way, my lowest moment in Even Stevens is wearing that blonde wig singing that song. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> so good. Ain't got no trouble oh, that's so, in my life. Oh, perfect. God. <laughs> okay, you know, that, oh yeah, right. My, my wife turned to me on the couch. We watched that and she said, Pays the bills. <laughs> and then she just went and did dishes or something. And, <laughs> oh, but it's so great. It's you so, look so happy doing it, though. You know, we, put, we we were, Donna was supposed to be up there with me, and she shied away from it. I go, please don't let me, you know, have the, and whatever. She, didn't yeah. she, did she kind of demure yeah, more the, to the background? Yeah, the whole family gets at up the at end, the yeah. end. Oh, we do, yeah. 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 I just remember, oh, please don't, don't put me out here by myself. But uh, (laughs) anyway, back to that uh, sausage episode. That was it was really here's another thing is I'm a very tense actor. Mm -hmm. I tend to be Mm -hmm. very um, I'm just thinking to try and get my line out. I'm not relaxed like you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And somehow when that that scene with the shovel, when I'm going, Lou, I'm, you know, really interested what's in there, you know, or something. Yeah. 
uh, about the, what's in the tunnel. Um, yeah. That scene, I never get really loose. I was looking at Shia and we were we cracked up. We just couldn't get through the scene. And that <laughs> never happens to me. I always envy that when that happens to actors, when they're just giggling and they can't. And Fred had to come in. All right, separate you guys. Take five minutes and go away. It was so – but again, only Shia could elicit that reaction in me because, um, again, he's just got like laughter in his eyes when you're yeah. working right. with him. Yeah. And um, uh, so I, I just lost it and I had so much fun. And then the scene turned out great anyway. I thought, you know, me being mad at him and then we, we buddy up and go in the tunnel. Yeah. Uh, you know what's one of the best lines in that episode? What's that? Oh, I know. Lewis? Why aren't you at school? And he says, why aren't you at work? <laughs> and then you guys just kept digging. <laughs> I remember that. And you know what? I I remember thinking to, to to like, what does this mean? I had to ask Fred, like, what does this mean? And he'd go, yeah. well, you're, he's asking you at work. You know, why aren't you at work? And I go, yeah, but what does that mean? <laughs> so, like, I did that line and still didn't understand what the scene was. <laughs> so I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I always took it as like them maybe acknowledging a um, like a timeline hole where yeah. it was like that day, like most people like I, I'm pretty sure they keep like going back to ah. like shots of the school and it's right. the same day. And like Lewis isn't there yeah. and then you're not even at work either. So they just decided right. to poke fun at the fact that both of you guys aren't where you're supposed to be. You're here doing this scene instead. You yeah. Know? And I, I yeah. really like that scene uh, where. Where you hear Don, you know, I go, you know, it's Don, what, Don, what Donnie said, you know, it's be the, what, whatever it is. Don't, yeah. some, yep. you don't have to believe in what Lewis is doing. Just, just believe, believe Lewis. Lewis. <laughs> right. And then, uh, then he's uh, suddenly at the top of the stairs and it's that surreal thing of, I heard you the first time or, you know, yeah. I heard you the first time. Yep. <laughs> and then the clock moving. I got to fix that clock. That <laughs> so to good. me, yeah, it's like, that's the underplaying I wish I had done more of when I look back, you know, it was just mm-hmm. so that was drier stuff, you know, smaller stuff that uh, that's yeah. the stuff I really like now in hindsight. Oh, yeah. It's same. Like upon revisiting the show, any parts that were a little bit drier, I'm like, I love this. It's mm-hmm. just so good. Do you yeah. feel like you guys were getting in? I mean, my favorite season is the second season, but I love season one and three, obviously. Um, did you guys feel like you were finally getting into more of a groove by the time the show was wrapping and, and kind of wish that it was would keep going or? I remember being Gary Marsh came by and he was talking to Shia. It was right near the end of the show. And then mm-hmm. he left and I, and I was thinking, hey, ABC and Disney are now together. You know, mm-hmm. they're, they're a, a merger. And wouldn't it be great to take this show into a Friday night? Uh, format where where now we, it's the high school years, and right. Shia was totally on board with doing. Really? He goes, "I'd love to do that." We were all wanted to do it. Um, My heart. For some reason, why I don't know why Disney ends things, you know, like at three right. C or at that time, it, it was just logical. To you you already have this product that works. Put it mm-hmm. on network, and uh, you know, make it a, a family show on Friday night, the way TGIF was back in the eighties. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Miller Boyette shows, you know. Yeah. Right. They were contemplating doing the same thing with Lizzie McGuire as yeah. well, I know for sure. So it might have been just a big <laughs> migration over it, to. Yeah. Maybe yeah. they might have their reasons, you know, for doing it. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I never understood the Disney Channel. Why are you not running commercials here? And I, I asked Sean one time, what what is the. And he goes, it's just a billboard for Disney in general. Yeah. And I, a billboard for Disney. What does that mean? Well, for the theme parks, for this. And I go, well, how do they make money? It's for, and it was, I, I know the Disney channel was at that time, I think one of the most successful entities yeah. within the Disney organization. So I, but I yeah. still don't get it. Yeah. Around that mm. time, around, uh, I think Geraldine Laybourne, who actually was in charge of getting Nickelodeon into their heyday in the late eighties and, and early nineties, she made the switch to Disney and then Disney kind of blew up and um, and they had even Stevens and Lizzie McGuire and, uh, you know, Kim Possible and so forth. Um, yeah, Disney was really killing it in the early 2000s. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, yeah. I think people definitely regard that as peak Disney yeah. at, to a degree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it helped that our show was a single camera show, more yeah. like a film. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I, I will say the the like Warren and Rensler, they mm-hmm. and Sean too, they love doing the live stuff okay. because 
Mark and Dennis uh, had come from uh, Full House. I think they did the the final years of Full House, and they love that live audience thing and, uh, you know, changing lines at the last minute in front of – and just the energy of a live audience, which they they did on Raven right after Mm -hmm. us. And um, uh, it's a little slower to do the other thing, putting it together shot by shot. But I think the look of it is great. And uh, yeah. We just had that style, those sound effects and Coda's music, and it, it, yeah. it really had a nice, quirky, funny thing. Yeah. Yes. I mean, the music was jazzy, and kind of the way the characters fed off each other was jazz, you know, improv. It had an improv feel. Um, you know? Yeah, I, I would call it, because um, I, rem- I heard your interview with uh, Matt, Yeah, and mm-hmm. um, he's right. We stuck to the scripts, but maybe we would keep them loose or fill in a moment yeah. that was empty just with with yeah. just a or you know over talk yeah but th- there was that but we did he's right you know the script came first and the gotcha. scripts were good and these guys churned out scripts you know the, that last season uh you know the kids were growing so fast that we shot mm-hmm. three seasons in two years and that was yeah. even with a break between after the first six episodes when the new regime came in Mm. Uh, so we were doing six shows at a time and that is a lot of pressure on the writers to come yeah. up with all these scripts and, mm. uh, you know, Tom and Matt and, and the girls and, and, uh, you know, there were really only, I think six on staff and then some extra writers. And that's, that's a lot to do. So the person who's credited as the writer of the episode, did they like oversee the room or, or who gets the credit for that episode? I think they assign it and they go out and write it, but they okay. really worked as a team. You know, the gotcha. girls yeah. were in in the room, I think, with uh, with Mark and Dennis. And, you know, these are people without ego and just sure. happy to have their jobs and happy to make fun on television. Mark and Dennis, you know, were school teachers in New York City. Uh-huh. And the whole time they they were going like, how lucky am I to, that, that I'm, you know, on, on one show after another like this and get yeah. to do this job? They were great to work with. Fantastic. And Dearborn, too. I mean, you know, just a great sensibility. Tom, uh, Susie, Sarah, you know, just really great people. I enjoyed being with them when I was off camera. I would go up to the writer's room a lot because I'd have so many laughs with them. That's awesome. See, that's good. Yeah. That's so yeah. nice. Yeah. Like good vibes just all around. Good yeah. vibes. And I did, you know, I, I know Honey Boy came out, but I would do my imitation of Jeff for them, which... You know, Jeff had this – Jeff was kind of like a hippie and he go, you know, I'm taking Shy up to Tehachapi. I'm going to teach him about nature and we're going to build a house out of Clorox bottles. Oh, wow. Oh, you know, and my God. they would just kind of go, oh, do this one. Do Christie's mother. You know, the, we would we would have yeah. a lot of laughs. That's awesome. Oh, my at, par- God. at the That's parents' amazing. expense. You know, I got along with Jeff. I liked him. And, um, mm. you know, he was a, he's a real character. I, like, yes, I can uh, imagine. Know, and in the movie, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of the darker side of him. You know, he yeah, also has – you know, he has a side that's more whimsical, but I, you know, he was, uh, I mean, he was entertaining, you know, and mm. the, and to his credit, you know, even in, from the honey boy point of view to his credit, he, um, he did show up and this was his, you know, he had been out of Shia's life, I think for a while. And mm. this was his way of, as he would say, making amends that I'm here for my son to do, you know, to, mm. to be the, in the here in his life at this point. Time. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, mm. you know, that was a, a big deal because he didn't probably have he could have been, you know, a father who didn't show up. So I, I yeah. give him credit for that. Right. Yeah. There was another thought I had um, when I was watching Honey Boy and then when I realized we were going to be interviewing you. Um, it's just like in general, like how was your experience watching the movie? Like as someone who played Shia's on screen dad, watching this sort of thing play out. Um, mm. yeah, I just like, I couldn't really imagine. I was like, I wonder what that was like for you. Well, I, the whole time I kept thinking was hot, was Shia staying at a hotel, a motel like that yeah. during mm. our show? Like that would, that would have been news to me. Huh. And was he driving in on a motorcycle? Was he, I don't think uh, later, I think he was smoking cigarettes, but was he smoking cigarettes at 13? I don't think, I never smelled that on him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I don't know what came later and or what was done for dramatic effect. And it might very well be that. Yeah. I'll tell you this. It didn't affect the, the kid is the most. Per, those kids 
Shia and Christy, you know, and all the kids who were, you know, their friends. I've mm-hmm. never seen a more professional group of actors. You get oh, together yeah. with people my age now, nobody can remember their lines and do, you know, they're very unprofessional. These <laughs> kids just nailed it every time. They knew what yeah. to do. The scenes move right along. They they knew right when they could add a physical gesture, that kind of thing. So he was on it from, you know, that point of view. But the other thing during the movie is uh, I was so taken in by watching his Jeff perform, his performance as the father, right. that uh, I wasn't even thinking about I wasn't really yeah. thinking about the show. I was, uh, I was kind of mesmerized by his performance and Jupe's performance. I mean, what a kid! Another, yeah. you know, out of the park kid performance. You know, oh, yeah. exceptional, exceptional. Uh, and I kept. I guess my thought was not so much about the show. I go, these two guys better be up for Academy Awards. Yeah, I, th- mm. I thought like that. These are best supporting actor, yeah. strong performances. Yeah, they were fantastic. All, and all three of the all three of yeah. the male leads. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but it wasn't like so much about like if you were thinking of the show, but just like, um, you know, that relationship that you had had with Shia during that time of his life, you know, yeah, just how that that would have been. But yeah, it was it was I did see on screen there a darker version, even the way they showed our show. It yeah. looked a little it seemed dingy. a little darker. Yeah, it was dingy looking. Think. Yeah. And I think of us as bright lights. Exactly, the living room yeah. set, the, the the dining room set, very bright. We're mm-hmm. sitting around the table during takes. We'd be telling jokes. Mm-hmm. Uh, you asked about how the, the energy, I kind of went off the track. Yeah. But great. Just sitting around the table having a lot of laughs, uh, you know, at those episodes when we're around the table. Everyone getting mm-hmm. along. Everyone happy to have a job. And <laughs> particularly Shia and Christy so professional that yeah. they nailed it every time you just go these kids mm. are so on it i've seen kids who don't want to be there mm. you know really honestly they're kind of i don't know they, like somehow they got into it or their parents are more into it than they are yeah. mm-hmm. and these kids wanted to be there love to do their stuff and just uh I, after that experience when i got out of college i thought um oh I, i'm headed for big things and then if i hit i remember thinking i'm now on a kid show and you know when I'm start when I'm starting, I go, I know this is different than my dream. And now, in hindsight, I would do nothing but a kid show. Yeah. Like that was my oh. favorite. It's my favorite thing to do, and my favorite group of actors. Most kids are just really, um, they're just easier and and better to work with, and unjaded yeah. and more professional than adults. To me, huh. you know. I mean, obviously, we know Shia, and obviously, everyone saw his comedic genius. Uh, on the show, but were, were there any other stars or co-stars on the on Even Stevens who y- you think kind of are underrated in that regard? Oh. Maybe you know they were funnier than people think. I thought all those kids were going off to huge things. Yeah, I thought um, Fred, who played Tom yes. Gavalsi, Tom. Yeah, I said this kid's going to have his own show. He's, he's so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's so, he's definitely a favorite. Yeah. Like that's Stand you out. know the, in my generation there was. Uh, I watched the reruns, but Leave It to Beaver, there mm-hmm. was a guy. Um, oh, Eddie Haskell. Uh, what was it? Eddie Haskell. And yeah. you go, well, that's an iconic. And the, the guy turned into a cop. Yeah. You know, it's funny. He didn't go into acting. And the same with Fred. is uh, like Fred is so exceptional. You could almost go, oh, it's Tom Grabowski. You know, like a, as a type yeah. Of, a, yeah. of a friend, you know, as, a, as the sidekick. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I'm surprised. And same thing with Steve Lawrence. Uh, you know, that I thought yeah. the Beans thing caught on. So huge with people. Yeah. It did. Uh, Still to this day. Yeah, it's rabid. <laughs> yeah. And I think, you know, Shia was getting older and maybe they brought him in because they maybe needed, you know, uh, a more youthful, you know, kid yeah. on the show, you know, for the tween audience. It helped him mature Lewis's character too. Yeah. 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 But he, he worked out great. I mean, he yeah. was really good. It, Beans, I always say he definitely is one of the more creative and interesting, like, little kid, yeah. wacky neighbor characters yeah. to bring in at a certain point, but yeah. Beans was like a, re- I mean, not a revival, it didn't need a revival, but it was a second breath, you know what I mean? That's what was interesting to me, because I watched the whole first season, and I totally forget about Beans, yeah. and then he comes in, yeah. and I'm like, oh right, they added him. Yeah. I was like, they, it was just, yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Didn't he come in in uh, Secret Life of Girls? Was that the yep. first yeah, time? Secret World, yeah, Secret World, yeah. Yeah, my favorite. That's secret, my number secret, one. Secret, yeah. Oh, that's your number one? Yeah. It's a good, yeah, that was a good episode. Yeah, that was a good. 
That was I, that was again. That was Fred, wasn't it? Fred Savage. Yeah, yeah. yeah mm-hmm. he, that was his first thing he directed. When am I wrong? Yeah, yeah. Yep. I, did he only do the two? I think he only yeah. did two. Oh, that is so crazy. Now this makes sense to me. Oh my goodness, I have these little things. Let me see. I think I have them. Don't ask me how I got these. I found them on eBay. Is it slides? Like three dimensional slides? Yeah, it's like it's like yeah. a little film slide. Um, mm-hmm. And this was a picture from like a negative or something from Secret World of Girls. Yeah. But the title says Raiders of the Lost Sausage, yeah. oh. and it says directed Fred Savage, Stephen Anthony Lawrence, and Shia LaBeouf. Here, that was probably the only two episodes he did. Yeah, and they wrote Raiders instead of Secret that World of sense. Girls on the picture. I have a couple from Surf's Up. The slides from that one. Mm. Well, oh, wait a minute, guys! I have something. I because oh. I knew what I, I knew you guys. I was going to ask you if show. you had anything from set or if you if uh, there was anything you I, you took. Hang on, just a second. I'm excited. <laughs> I know. I feel like we need a drum roll. It's nothing great, but oh, there you, you go. recognize this. This is Shia's. Oh no! no. Yeah. Yeah, this is one of those Hawaiian shirts of, Sh- of Shia's. Whoa. Yeah, because I didn't know cool. if it was like one that you had worn yeah, at one point. Yeah, that's what I was point. trying to no, think. No, and yeah. you know, it wasn't wasn't like I was trying to get a collector's item. I yeah. bought, I for $700, I bought my wardrobe. They were selling at the very end of the show everything off. So I said, $5 a shirt? I'll take that. For, nice. they, and then I bought all the Steve Stevens suits. And you know what? I have not bought a new suit in 20 years. I wear all oh that stuff. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Like now that you say that, that shirt does look familiar. That now I'm like, so I'm cool. playing like every episode in my head right now to try to see where was, it was, was from. That a, I don't know uh, where it's from. Was that a sale open to the public or was it just like for casting? No, members? it was just, I mean, maybe I think they just sold off at the, the last week. Oh, that's they so said cool. it. And I said, oh, I want, I want my suits. You know, that's great. And yeah. then they, this other, other stuff and I go well oh oh my shirts too this is good and I wore this stuff for you know 10 years occasionally something would wear out and I'd get rid of it but that was my full wardrobe of everything I wore for the next 15 years oh my gosh that's amazing yeah it's so cool that you have that I have another Hawaiian shirt that's uh Tawny Tawny Dean's father oh okay yeah uh Dr. Dean Dr. Dean (laughs) yeah so I have his and his is a colorful one and that I wore in on the audition for um uh, for read it and weep, oh, so maybe wow. I got the job because of that Hawaiian shirt. Oh yeah, that that's the one he wears. Uh, well, it has to be. Yeah. This is only episode where the they're call. yeah, where they yeah. tell them at the end of the episode yeah. he's dressed probably all fun because they got that limo and <laughs> that guy who plays that is Jim Meskimen. He's a uh, uh, we, we've worked together too. Uh, he's a huge voiceover artist. Yeah, and mm. uh, we we did an episode of Castle together. Okay, and we were just saying, you know, we look so alike. How did they cast us? And we're in two different <laughs> roles. And they go, Hey, after lunch, why don't you? I'll go and play the judge that you were playing, and you play me, and see if they know the difference. <laughs> oh man! How about any pro- any props or anything, or mostly wardrobe stuff? No, it was just to have clothes. You know, yeah. I wasn't mm. trying. To get <laughs> it was any. just to have clothes. <laughs> it was a pre- purely functional purpose, right? Yeah, I was not into the memorabilia thing. <laughs> that's awesome. not even thinking oh, about that's that. That's funny. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I was going to say, yeah, there are a few questions, of course, that people had sent in across our various uh, social media. Just like uh, mostly just sort of fun questions that we probably all want to know. Okay. So, well, there's actually, maybe why don't we do this one first? Because it's a little. I don't know what juicy, I guess. Okay. Um, so someone on Reddit, their username is throwaway memer dog on Reddit. Uh, they wanted to know, do you know of, or remember any deleted scenes or stuff that was shot, but never made it to TV or controversial things that couldn't make it past the powers that be? Yes. I remember one controversial thing was there was an episode with a priest in it toward the end of the... I don't think I was in it. And yeah. it, it was like an Irish priest who would say, Little Timmy... Yes, yeah, uh, in, in Ren We Trust. trust. Yeah. Oh, that was in Ren Your Trust. So also yeah. your number one on the worst list, right? Yes, yeah, so. on the opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah. It's because you weren't in it, that's why. <laughs> well, there you go. Wow. Well, if, if only. But on that episode, um, they did not air that episode because the priest just in one shot had his had his hand on Timmy's shoulder mm. and that was when the controversy with the Catholic Church was coming up mm. Uh, mm-hmm. and so they they did not air that episode until later 
Yeah. And so wow. it was held held back. So that's a one 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 juicy little yeah. fact. It's, interesting. it's really interesting when you think about it. Yeah. I don't remember too too many deleted episodes or, 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 uh, or scenes, scenes or scenes yeah. that didn't get in. They pretty much everything we sh- I remember the, that I was in, uh, shot. It got in. Maybe a little trimmed. Hmm. Do you know of any scrapped uh, episode ideas or concepts or anything? Like well, that? we did the pilot, and we did the yeah. pilot. Um, there was one different cast member, Annabelle Gerwich, had played the mother in the pilot, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, Donna had not. And we shot the pilot in 99. I think it was in July of 99. Yeah. And the show didn't go into production until later, until 2000. I don't know if it was March or you know, at the beginning of 2000. Uh, they've got picked up in December or so. I remember getting a call from Sean, you know, like, hey, great Christmas present, you know. And um, <laughs> then we were starting, and maybe we started right in January, and then we shot those first six episodes and then took the break from March to, and I thought, show's not even going to come back. You know, it's like, the, uh, I guess so, it's done. Yeah. You know, I, I couldn't tell what was going on. No, that's crazy though. If you if you filmed the pilot in '99, I'm like Shia must have sprouted up real quick because he's tiny yeah. in those flashbacks right. that they repurposed. Oh, that's what I was saying. The, 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 yes, you. Thank you for leading me back. Um, yeah, so they took the pilot episode. We reshot some of those scenes with Donna, mm-hmm. and then they did the Ferris wheel as the yeah. interstitial stuff, and that was mm-hmm. that 21st episode. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, mm-hmm. nothing went to waste. So, but yeah, but from from 2000 though, when you guys started shooting again to just 99 to 2000, I'm like, that's a big difference then from what he looks like because yeah. he was so tiny and yeah. his voice was like so much higher. That's why I thought it had to have been at least a year or, or two before 99. Yeah, but, and he and then continued. You know, by the third season, he was so small. The the height difference with him and AJ yeah. and and with Christy, you know, and suddenly there he's Christy's height almost. Mm-hmm. I think and. Uh, yeah, it was, it was the kids grow so fast at that age. It's one reason Disney only does three seasons because the kids have become young adults by the end of that. Yeah. Mm. So you got the part, I'm guessing after Shia and Christy got it or did they, I'm guessing they did the kids first. No idea. I have no idea. I'm sure they did the kids first. Okay. Mm. Probably was important to find a Lewis, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, and Ren. Yeah. I always wondered yeah. too. Is is Ren short? I think I asked them. Is Ren short for Renee? I never did. I they that. don't ever. It says that when you search it, it says yeah. Renee Ren Stevens. They never say like, it oh. though in this yeah. show. No, they never they say never her do. name. Yeah. yeah, I always yeah. meant to ask. That would be a Dearborn question, I guess. Yeah. 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 I didn't think about that one. Yeah. Did with well, the house obviously was a set, um, but there is an actual – the facade is there – or it's not a facade. It's an actual house. Mm-hmm. Did you guys ever use the actual house as far as going in it or on, on – this, was, was, this is always one of our most wondered questions. Yeah. Well, this is uh, – the house was in Cheviot Hills and mm-hmm. it was going to be, I think, the Stevens house. Okay. So we go yeah. out there to shoot and um, it was a, a judge from Lo- the Los Angeles court system mm-hmm. owned that house, you know, lived in that house. Sometimes he'd be going out when we came in early in the morning. You go, oh, this poor guy, you know, crew comes into his house. So we shot there and we used sometimes the backyard. In Luscious Lou, that scene I have with Christy and yeah. where Nick uh, goes on the chair and falls off, that was mm-hmm. shot there. But then eventually what happened was we were shooting and we'd hear like, and they go, oh, what is that? Oh, there's some noise, you know, it's like, oh, some a guy's building a porch over there. So then <laughs> the location guy has to go over and pay off the guy wow. because he's building, you know, he's there building a porch and then we can get him mm. to shut up for an hour or so, you know, we can get our scene done. Come back the next week. Two, suddenly someone else is building a porch. Yeah, because they found out. They <laughs> and wants money, money thrown at them. We come back the third week. <laughs> Three guys are building porches. And then I think they just said, all right, we're out of here. We're going to use the stock shot of the house. And we built the 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 just the front door portico part of yeah. uh, of the house on a set. So anytime yeah. we're leaving the house and it's in the doorway, yeah. we shot that on stage on a set that looks exactly like that huh. house. We never shot in that house, as I remember, uh, no rooms. Oh, yeah, we did in the pilot. Okay. But I don't know if it was that house. It could have been another house, but we shot in an actual house 
for those scenes. Yes, because it, it is a different house in the pilot. Well, at least the layout's yeah. different. Um, yes. Yeah. And the rooms, yeah. the interior, like, are we in a dining room? It's not the same dining room that yeah. was the set. Yes. You can't tell, though. I mean, it's mostly all close-ups, yeah. so, like, you can't mm-hmm. really tell too much, but... I was going to say, yeah, probably what was, I, maybe was yeah. in the house. And I can't remember where we shot that. If it was the same house, it could have been a totally different house. And mm-hmm. we used an actual house and shot in all those locations and hmm. yeah. went to a different school than we usually go and went yeah. to, uh, we used a bunch of different schools for football fields or basketball courts. Oh yeah. Or, yeah. Mm-hmm. They were all in LA though. I have the house uh, marked on Zillow. So in case it ever goes up for an open house uh, <laughs> go inside it <laughs> wow no, honestly though and, and it kills me being on the other side of the country that i because <laughs> obviously i'd be right with you trying to see yeah. i feel this way about the show breaking bad oh, like yeah. i want to uh, go to see that house in uh, in albuquerque you know oh, the yeah. house that he's got in that mm-hmm. kind of stuff so i love that yeah show. it was it's my just favorite so show. cool i don't know yeah, it's it, just... it kind of meshes the worlds like you, you connect with the show so much and then to be able to see it in real life, it's like maybe, you know, it's that magic is still kind of active, you know. Like I remember I was wondering, I was like, please tell me it's a real house and it wasn't just built on a lot or yeah. something. And then right. when I found out it was a real house, it was just nice. I'm just like, yeah. wow, like that, it, that, that really exists. You know, it's just it's nice. A lot of people of my generation will go to the Brady Bunch house, which I think is. Oh, out in yes. Tarzana. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I'm obsessed with the Brady Bunch house. My mom's obsessed with the Brady Bunch. And so she raised me on that. And I, I was obsessed with the very Brady renovation that they just did, mm-hmm. where they renovated the actual house to look exactly like the inside of the set. Oh, you're um, kidding. And so that's wow. why I was like, I hope Even Stevens becomes popular enough now again that they do that to the Even <laughs> Stevens house. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then, and then we can go. Did yeah. you have a show like even see, I know you mentioned leave it to beaver. Was there a show that are in breaking bad now, obviously, but growing up, was there kind of a, a show that was seminal to your youth or, or adolescence? I don't know if it would have been a family show the way even Stevens is. There mm-hmm. were, mm. You know, when, when I grew up, it was, I dream of Jeannie bewitched. Uh, yeah. Those were big shows. I remember an obscure show called that's Hank. It was about, a, <laughs> I don't know this about thing. a guy who, yeah, he was. He's, he sold sandwiches at a college, and then he would get off his truck and go in, and take classes at school to try and you know get his degree. That title just got me. That's, That's Hank. Amazing. That's Hank. <laughs> That's Hank. It sounds like a parody of a TV show. From the, sounds like an uh, SNL skit yeah. or something. Right. That's Hank. Right. That's great. But uh, yeah, that and then I did like Beaver, and I did did like. Um, it was really fun to come on a Friday night. To watch Brady Bunch, Partridge Family. I think I'm in high yes, school. Yes, Partridge point. Family. Yes. And then it was very racy to watch Love American Style, which was at the end yeah. of the night. Yeah. Because some of their sketches were about romance and you know, mm. yeah, whatever. So as a kid, you kind of go, "Ooh, this is you know, it it was sexy stuff." For yeah, a kid. yeah. For my, yeah, back then, <laughs> especially. And the Odd Couple was another great yeah. show during that time. Yeah. So, but that was high school for me. I'm trying to think, you know, in junior high, what I liked, but I don't know mm. what those years. I really liked Columbo, oh, yeah. which is a more of an adult show, but it's still to me that Breaking Bad's number one and Columbo's number two for me of my favorite shows of all time. Be- besides cool. even Stevens, as far as your the stuff you've done, what what is one that you that, that you would consider your favorite? Because you said even Stevens was one of your favorite uh, experiences, but w- something else you worked on that you look fondly on movie TV. I liked, it was, it was, um, not, uh, I was more, um, worried about my, uh, you know, about remembering lines and doing it right. It was the show called the comeback on HBO okay. and they'd have long takes where, you know, sometimes seven minute takes and you'd come into them late. Um, and you know, you don't want to blow a line when it's, when it's, uh, mm-hmm. something that's going to, you know, a, a shot that's going on for a long time. Right. But um, it was good because, and David Steinberg, who directed the, even Stevens pilot, also directed me on one of those. Mm. And See, and, though? See? And that's, yeah. and that's one of your favorite things, so. And, but I had already been on the show. He came on, you know, during it, during the run of yeah. it. And I had a recurring role on it, but I really liked that show because I've never played more real. 
Yeah. It was, you know, mm. you had to do documentary type acting, like even smaller than The Office. Yeah. It had to be, mm. it couldn't look fake. And right. so it was fun to do that kind of thing. Um, you know, as opposed to even Stevens, which is, you know, over the top a lot. You know, I felt like I, w- <laughs> I went over the top unnecessarily. <laughs> uh, so it's awesome. It's amazing, though. Uh, it's oh, there's so many things like, there are so many, I guess, Steve isms. I guess you could call them. Then, in the Hanukkah episode, when you guys all, there's two actually moments in that episode where all of you guys see that Lewis, um, you know, dropped all the gifts out the window. Mm. You just shout the loudest, "Oh no!" Ever. <laughs> <laughs> just, it's just that's me it's doing so my father. Loud. That is my father. And the funny thing too, I remember of that that is leaving the room and I push Donnie like I'm mad, but I push Donnie out of the room like, yeah. like I'm mad at him and it's really on Lewis. <laughs> but uh, that's, an, yeah. that's an episode I would have played very differently because um, I thought, you know, that archway we were playing, you know, that, that we're kind of yeah. in the fantasy and we're playing a caricature of ourselves. Mm-hmm. I would have instead yeah. played it absolutely the way Steve would have been. Instead yeah. of playing, you know, just looking back, that's uh, the, interesting. Those are, yeah, the, I, I just said, like, even though it's a fantasy, I would have played it like it's absolutely real for him. Mm-hmm. You know? But maybe you see, that's I so funny, though, because, again, one of the best moments is, you know, Lewis saying, I just wanted to be with you guys, my family. And you pop out of nowhere. What? You dance with our chicken and suddenly your family. <laughs> that was a great line. Yeah, that oh, was uh, so that intense. was a great that was a great Dennis Rensler line. Yeah, yeah, Dennis <laughs> came up with that thing, and I, I thought that was really great. That you know Donna was Jewish, and we you know like hey they've never really done mm-hmm. you know everything is always Christmas and yeah. like mm-hmm. let's go for that that we do that. But it was also interesting how they mentioned that your family celebrates Christmas, right? Yeah. Like when my family gets here next they week, threw that line in there. It was yeah. really good because that's probably you know if you're. You're in a house where that's done. That's how you do it. You do Passover and then you do Christmas. And Shia, mm-hmm. I guess, had that same experience as a kid. He said exactly. he did Hanukkah and Christmas. Yeah, and it's funny because his mom Today. is Jewish yeah. and his dad is Christian, apparently. So right. There you go. Right. Maybe maybe it came out of that. Yeah. They did that. They started really adapting for mm-hmm. who the people were. You know, See, uh, that's what I said. I, I said that to like Dearborn and then he was like, no, not really. Like when I was well, like, with the music and stuff and, and all that yeah. kind of stuff too. Well, with, say, say an example is Fred. Fred was really into all that judo karate yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. And then they started getting in the in the episodes. Yeah. And he took it yeah. very seriously. Yeah. You know, he was oh, yeah. he was really into the martial arts. Like that was Yeah. And and it kinda of came off so funny, you know, from the character, but you know, he was really Oh yeah. Into it. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. They were, you know, again, you know, Christie's a great, they, they work that in where all the band mm-hmm. stuff and the musical, you know, Christie's a really good singer. She was on Broadway yeah. doing uh, Beauty and the Beast. Yep. Yeah. So, um, and I still sing the, you know, again, Jim Wise's music. Mm-hmm. It was so yeah. great. I still find myself, I'm in the middle of nowhere and I'm going, what's the matter with Ren? Yeah. You know, just, it just pops in it's my head. It's really catchy. And, and I don't, yes. I don't watch the episode. It was that, it's from yeah. back then. It's still in my mm-hmm. head because it's such a catchy tune. Because you, you and Donna only have like one little stanza. Um, do you wish you had more, do you guys wish you had more songs or lines or anything? In hindsight, yeah. yes. Yeah. At the time, I'm probably going, hey, I got a nice easy week here. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I go, hey, let the kids do all the heavy lifting. Yeah. I mean, you guys' moments there are so good because I, I always thought that your moment where you say, it's a Steve, Ren's not in her bed, we should find her. Yeah, let's hustle. And you guys start literally like Oh, doing the things. hustle. Like, they made a lot of references to Donna. Exactly, uh, Saturday night. Donna was yeah. Donna was an iconic figure in the disco era, you know, because, yes. of, because of Saturday Night uh, Fever. I mean, that mm-hmm. was as big, I can't even think of what, what would be now, but it was... Yeah. You know, it changed the 70s, you know, and and into the 80s. It became the whole cultural, that movie, even though the movie, a lot of times people will go, well, it's a three-star movie. It's not a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. But what it did culturally was, you know, uh, it it, it ushered in the whole disco era. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I always assumed that that was a nod to that. Yeah, and a lot of references to Donna because of that. You know, sometimes we had a flashback where we were younger and she's dressed like, yes, you know, yes. that, and, and they would make little references to, to her character or the, 
the whole disco era because of her being a part of it. Yeah. And by the way, very inventive actress. You know, uh, like even in those first things, Swap.com, is that the one with, mm-hmm. on the – no, what's the one on the racetrack? Stephen Jeans? Stephen Jeans, Steven yeah. Jeans. Yeah, Stephen Jeans, yeah. You know, I'd just be sitting there and she goes, come on, get on. Let's be on our cell phones. You know, we're we're that type A couple who's do- – she would always be coming up with bits cool. where, where oh. I would just be <laughs> – you know, like if I'm not directed, I just sit there. So, you know, <laughs> she's really uh, – she's always thinking of business. And, you know, when she got in the show too, I think she came on. She was going – did she directed one or two? She Yeah, she's directed a few yeah. episodes, yeah. Yeah. That was the main reason I think she she accepted the show because she wanted to get into directing at that huh. time. And she did some other mm. Disney shows at that time too. Yeah. Do you get recognized a lot for Even Stevens? Almost exclusively. Really? Like okay. if yeah. I'm if if I am recognized, yeah. it's by people who are around 30 years old and yep. um and it, it's funny when they'll 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 recognize you. They their hands go up in that home alone kind of position yeah. like on their cheeks <laughs> and they go oh my god oh you you're the dad on even stevens and i go oh, you know i'm thinking in my head it's a kid show and, yeah. and they're going i'll say oh well yeah it was a fun show no 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 you don't realize that was my youth yep. and they get yeah. really sentimental yeah yeah and it, it's touching it's really yeah. touching I mean, yeah, go, for, you know for us especially too i mean um it just meant so much to me as a kid. And, and I know it meant a lot to Brittany too, and still means a lot to us, obviously. Uh, oh, obviously. But, um, <laughs> yes. Right. As, as much as, as anything, I look and I go, well, I, I've done that in my yeah. life. You know, that, right. that it's brought that kind of this thing I got from Columbo or, you know, or the shows yeah. that I watch that people are feeling, you know, that same way about something I was a part of, yeah. you know, a small part of too, because it's really, these powers, Sean and David and Dennis yeah. and Matt and uh, Mark, you know, who are really shaping that world and making yeah. it happen. Yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting though. Cause I feel like it's getting to a point now where, you know, it's transcending being just a kid's show. I know that when I revisited it, I wasn't thinking of it that way anymore. I was like, this is just a good show. Mm-hmm. Like it was just a really well-written acted, directed, crafted show. Yeah. Um, I think just in general. Yeah. And just every, not, not a bad, you, you know, I had one bad day on a set and otherwise it was blissful. The writers would sometimes go, why are you, you, you never seem to complain. You're always, and I go, are you kidding? I got a job. You know, I have a job <laughs> yeah. here for this year, at least, you know, unless they cancel it. And, um, but do you remember that one where we're doing, it's one of the early episodes where we're doing something, uh, a dance move. You know, we're in the living room. When you guys were tap dancing? Tap dancing. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. That's in Deep Chocolate. I'm a terrible... Oh, it was Deep Chocolate. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because I like that episode. But I did not like that day because I'm very bad with movement. And I thought they were filming it wide. And everyone mm. else had the dance down. Uh, and I couldn't get it. And I it was very frustrating. You know, yeah. I, I just noticed it was the one day I was surly. That is perfect, though, because my one of my favorite parts of that episode is when you are quote unquote tap dancing then i guess very passive aggressively in that scene because you're talking because <laughs> you're because you're uh, talking you're being like passive aggressive about the fact that lewis has taken up your parking spot in the garage with all his boxes of chocolate i'm not gonna ask you again get them out of there <laughs> you, do like, you do these jazz oh, hands so good, yeah. oh is that right oh okay yeah so oh, yeah I, whatever perfect. it was i just know I, I was thinking oh my god i'm gonna look so bad here because you know, Donna the, the, and, and Christy, they're great with movement. Mm. And, uh, and, and oh, that episode, crazy. I do remember that the very end on that driveway when we were slipping and sliding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Savage, Savage Steve, who directed that, came and said, yep. um, guys, we're losing the light. you got to get this in one. We're going to film mm. with two cameras and you got to get it in one because otherwise we're, we're not going to get this today. Yeah. And so yeah. there was a lot of pressure on to go, wow, we got to get this. The whole scene that uh, that encounter with that incredible actor. Yeah, and you had a you had a small little monologue there to yell at him yeah. as well. Right, and you know we and we didn't. And I think I was going, hey, we, dude, maybe we should rehearse this. He goes, I got it. And I'm going, oh no. <laughs> so they, it was just turn on the cameras and you hope we get it. And we got it in in one. That guy was so oh, yeah. good. That Liggett. Yeah, the, he the, was. The yeah, oh he, my god! And you know he passed away. We just found out. Yeah, but really, mm. he was on Mad TV. Really talented guy. 
Yeah, he was really funny. Yeah, we love him in yeah. that episode. He's, He's really hilarious. good. hilarious. He so, did that opening. Yeah. Sp- I've, I've heard your podcast, so it refreshed my memory on it. But yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. that whole thing. Benjamin Franklin. Soul <laughs> shock. It, it was so, it was, I mean, uh, who wrote that episode? Oh, that was Jessica Simpson. Oh, yeah, okay. Just, her, her name was Jessica Simpson. How odd. Who is that? It's her only credit on IMDb. Funny that Jessica Simpson and then we had Beans who was Steve Lawrence, and this is before my generation. Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet were like the Frank Sinatra and, you know, he was kind of in that mold of Frank Sinatra. So it was so odd, you know, for for like if I'm there with Dennis or, you know, like the guy's name is Steve Lawrence. You know, it's like, yeah. it's like you know, it's like, oh, his name is uh, uh, Bieber. You know, it's, it's crazy that he yeah. had a singer's <laughs> name, you know. Yeah, that's why he had to put the Anthony, I guess. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I guess um, just some sort of fun kind of random questions, I guess. So just things like uh, what was maybe the funniest thing to happen to you on set? That was from Illy Lay on Reddit. The funniest thing that happened on set? Oh, wow. Um, Wow. I'm just drawing a blank. I will say this, they're like huge laughs every day. Oh, Such a nice man. place to work. And, you know, that was the old Baywatch studio. Yeah, yes. That's right. Yeah. It's crazy. This thing is in the middle of an industrial park. You know, like mm-hmm. across the street was like a German import export business. You just never know that a show was being done here. You go, oh, well, yeah. weren't you guys? Everyone has this image that we were on the Disney lot. And, yeah. Mm. And which was a good thing that we weren't because we were down in Playa del Rey. Very convenient for Sean and David because they mm-hmm. live down there, the two producers. But um, uh, we were out of Disney's watch. So they had a guy, uh, Aaron Garen, who came, you know, who Beans is named after, yeah. you know, who would come down and, and another guy, Corey, too, who I think came down at the end. They would be the onset guys, but we were not, Disney was not in our hair at all, you know, like executives mm. or anything like that. And it was so laid back. You'd come in the front entrance and I forget the name of the guy. He was the receptionist. He'd have his feet up, some sandals and shorts. He'd be playing the guitar. Hey, dude, what's up? <laughs> and that was the way you came in to work. It was just a very yeah, awesome. casual place, you know. And uh, See, that's great. Like all of this makes so much sense, does it yeah, not? Yeah. Like, it, like as I'm hearing all of this, I'm like, yes, this makes sense. I feel like all of this came across on screen. It doesn't feel like a bright you know, like glitzy uh, Disney show where everyone's like perfect and stuff. Like everyone has their flaws and, and uh, it's a real, it has a real quality to it. Yeah. I would pray to get to have a work situation that had the vibe of that show that, yeah. that uh, just a welcoming vibe, happy to go to work every day, great atmosphere to work in fun people, a lot of laughs. Oh, I can't even imagine you, all the laughs. You know, you know what was great was it's a lot of the tone got set by starting off in the makeup trailer cuz we'd all mm-hmm. be mm-hmm. in there and Karen Tool was the makeup person. Uh and she took guff from no one. You know, like she'd put shy in his place <laughs> instantly. And so that, there was always a lot of laughs. That's how you start your day putting the makeup on and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right. And just a lot of camaraderie gets built in the in the makeup trailer for any show. And sometimes you'll go into a show and they're very silent in the makeup trailer or someone's not in a good mood and there's like this silent vibe going out. So that sets the tone for how you go onto the stage later. That makes sense. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. She'd be a good guest if you could ever get, you know, cause she, she knows that every, she dealt with every, yeah. you know, <laughs> All yeah, the, that'd be cool. Yeah. You, you know, she has the tea. Be interested yeah. to get, yeah. to, to have some crew people. You know, as, as yeah, well as we, do, we, we would, we do want to get some like deeper people that people don't really know the names or the faces of. It'd be cool to have them on. Too. Yeah, but, I mean, definitely, I think McNamara is someone we. Oh, you really, got really Got to talk. You to. got him. Yeah. yeah, and I'll say this about Sean too. Sean is, <clears throat> he was great, and you know, they probably I don't know if someone talked about his takes, but you know, he yells out at at, at you know at a take like genius, and you know yeah. at, at every take, and then if you got brilliant. That means you're doing it again. Something was wrong. And yeah. if he said like, okay, excellent, that meant it really sucked. <laughs> so <laughs> He was positive though. He was, he was positive. always positive. positive and and uh, just full of energy. Like a 
a in a in the best sense of the word childlike energy. Yeah. He has a wonder for for life in general. You know, wide eyed and and it's funny that because Shia was an like an old soul. Mm-hmm. There were times that like they were very simpatico. They were like buddies. Shia is actually um, exactly the same. It's two 13 year old <laughs> mentality of the, the show, which probably really fueled the way it looked. And- yeah, because, you know, we've said like the episodes where like Sean is involved, they're like usually next level episodes for us. And we can really sense yeah. and see the difference. Sometimes yeah. he'd be running when you go and you go, wait, Sean, what, what, what are you doing? He goes, don't worry, I'm editing it already in my head. <laughs> you know, it's like he, he just, he's just kind of running to the next shot and doing stuff. That's great. David, his partner, was more the nuts and bolts. He did the Leaving Stevens. Yeah. yeah. And that Pookie Stevens, which to me, I think that's one of the best episodes we did. Yeah. I know. I do love that one. You probably know it's my mom's, one of my mom's yeah, favorites. Yeah. I think it was a touching episode. It really was sentimental. And yeah. Pookie Stevens, you know, when we were doing that yard, <clears throat> two things about the yard sale. So here's a way you, know, you can look. Because I remember someone coming up and going, did you see the Donnie sign? Yes, it's spelled wrong. Right. And they go, oh, oh it's spelled wrong. And <laughs> It's always bothered me. It's always yeah. bothered me. But I got very self-conscious. You know, the worst thing that happens to an actor is they start looking around at cameras and a crew and you, you, you tense up. Mm-hmm. Every once in a while, this will happen for me. And it happened when we were doing that yard sale scene. Yeah, because the girls did write that episode. I said... Was I horrendous in that scene because I was so outside my body, you know, doing that scene? I felt like a like it was a first audition. Wow. That's perfect, though, because there's that one scene where I can kind of see that now. But you're supposed to be kind of awkward and you're trying to sell this inflatable foot spa. And you're like trying to come up with something good. And you're like, you can have an oasis in any places. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Inner psyche got me in that self-conscious state so I could play it that way. Yeah, and it worked. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I remember, like, uh, being hard on myself after that scene. Like, oh, my God. So, I mean, I guess uh, another one. These are all kind of in the same vein. And I feel like you might have already touched on it, but what was the most interesting slash best episode to film? And that was from Abigail Kate 18 on Instagram. I kind of like the word interesting. Like, what was the most interesting episode? Yeah, I don't know if I wanted to talk about this episode, and then I'm <clears throat> I'm shoehorning it in on this answer, but when we did uh, Devil Mountain, mm-hmm. such an unusual... First of all, you know, I, there were a couple of episodes, I guess, the now that you brought it up, Uncle Chuck and The Sausage, Devil Mountain, and... Um, the Thomas Grabowski affair. Oh, yeah, that one, too. Yeah, that one, that one too. Where, where I felt I had more to do. You know, a lot of times I work two days a week. When we did that, I think it was that Butler episode. Yeah. I came in, or one of those episodes, I came in, did something. I was in at 6.30, went to makeup, shot the scene. I'm out at 9.30. See you next week, guys. Wow. wow. Uh, but those other ones I had more to do on, um, say, Devil Mountain. I worked four out of the five days. Oh, yeah. You guys were on location for that, too, That's right? why I'd say interesting, because we were out in Calabasas, and those rock formations, mm. Mm. interesting out there. And to be out of the studio and in that strange environment, Matt was directing. A lot of fun, and it was the deepest scenes I have ever had with Christy. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Because most, most of the time, it's you and, and Lewis. And then Ren and Eileen kind of yeah. have their stuff, but yeah. And that was a nice one, you know, because it was really the father coming to the daughter's aid or her getting teed off at the father. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I hate birds! Yeah, some big bird <laughs> acting in there. <laughs> but I did like that scene, too, of the Bobby Deaver uh, nacho scene. <laughs> Yes. Oh, my gosh. Matt's really good at writing that stuff. Yeah. But yeah. he's a, a really interesting director, too. It was during Devil Mountain. It was a, He goes, hey, Steve. And I go, you know, I, I, my name's Tom. No, Steve, come here. Steve. <laughs> like he was calling me my character. Name. And then he said, uh, I just want to say something. Love those nachos. And I go, well, what does that mean? And he goes, I think you know what it means. All right, let's pull him. <laughs> and, you know, like I'd be so off balance. Yeah to that scene and I have a difficulty laughing you know that mm. scene uh, with Donnie and the uh, Abraham Lincoln thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had if you look Donna's forcing all the you know she's getting all the laughs in that scene I had a lot of trouble laughing but I went into that Bobby Deaver scene and then suddenly I go 
They call these shark wreckers. <laughs> and I did this laugh came out of me so organically because yeah. that had just put me wow. off guard. The kiss was uh, we had to do the cry thing, and I I did a lame, you know, some yeah. <laughs> that Simpkins case or whatever. <laughs> Whereas Nick was brilliant at the end. Yeah, yeah, did, yeah, that's all the time. Yeah. Speaking of like you crying over. Um, losing a case or whatever that was part of the thing earlier with like the steve backstory thing did you ever know what kind of law he practiced no no i assume he was not a trial lawyer because he was home all the time yeah. yeah and i guess in that splash episode my boss is there yeah mm-hmm. but I don't say what he does <clears throat> we didn't ever <laughs> knew about i too is she a senator. I remember asking those guys, and they go, "I don't know. I thought she was a state senator. Now we're, we're going to make her a real senator. You know, whatever." Yeah. We just waffled on all those professionals. Yeah, no, she was a state senator for the whole thing, I think. And then I remember on like a promo, Donna was like, "She is the only state senator that works directly from her home, <laughs> or something, because she's always home." Yeah. Yeah, she's the least busy state senator ever. <laughs> Sacramento, where are you? Yeah. Are you being? State Senate. Yeah. Running her for the real Senate by the end, right? Yeah, she was uh, yeah, she was running for Congress. Yeah, the congressional seat. Yeah, and she was trying to go to DC. Yeah. Next question. Um from Tat V, I think it's T A A T V on Instagram. Uh they just want to know in general, what was the experience like shooting the Even Stevens movie? Because I was also on location. Yeah. It was yeah. on location, but we shot in three Four, say four different locations. Yeah. One was the trip to Hawaii. You know, Hawaii is not as uh, good a location to shoot in as uh, as it is to shoot in Arcadia. Yeah. A lot of that thing is shot. It's on where uh, Fantasy Island was shot. Oh, mm. okay. Arboretum. Oh. The guy built this 100 years ago, put yeah. all these different trees in. It's crazy. Yeah. And the Fantasy Island, if you know the old show, you know, Mr. Rourke's house yep. is in yeah. there. Oh, wow. wow. We actually got some of the better shots there because the sunlight is so good. Hawaii, mm, yeah. we're scrambling around. Sometimes we're shooting in um, areas that are a little more cosmetic. You know, it wasn't the, yeah. the wild it actually looks wilder out in the woods in the, the arboretum. Uh, Hawaii, it, the the weather's not as uh, as pleasing sometimes. It gets very gray. Yeah, it can rain a lot. Yeah, but they have to recolor maybe some some of the shots to make them brighter. Yeah, there was one sequence at the end when we're running through, I don't know wherever where Ren goes crazy. Yeah, and I go okay. Part of that's Hawaii. Part of that is Malibu. Part of that is the arboretum. Uh, yeah, so three different locations, oh, and they wow. cut all together. Oh, yeah. It's seamless, yeah. Like, that was shot the first day. This was shot almost the last day. And That's crazy. What island was it? We went to uh, Oahu. Okay. Uh, we stayed on the west, southwest part of the island, J. Mar- a Marriott place. You know, a lot of those mm. beach things where we're fighting the two factions. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we were on the beach there in... Uh, Right outside our hotel. Wow. Mm. Yeah, it was a, it was just a little walk. I feel like I knew this. I knew this because, oh, it was on the DVD commentary. I think it was Shia oh, okay. had said this. He's like, I just rolled out of bed. My hotel is right there or something like that. Like, like he kept saying stuff like that. Nice thing that the writers did, too. They said, you know what? We're going to make all the family members equal. Mm-hmm. Mm. They said, we're, you know, you and Beans are going to be together. You know, yeah. even though it's usually Lewis and Ren, mm-hmm. we'll take the whole family uh, for the TV movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was the last hurrah, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it yeah. was shot very quickly, 20 something days and Hawaii was only one week. And for mm-hmm. me, it was good because I had time off with my wife to go somewhere. Mm-hmm. But those guys were working hard. Yeah. Running from location to location, working at night. You know, the, the, I think the whole Hawaii thing is Dennis and Mark's idea. They had done yeah. that on Full House. Every show wants yeah. to go, go to, to Hawaii. Hawaii. Disney, yeah. Disney World and Hawaii, right? Those are like the two main locations. And mm. you think, oh, you're going to have this vacation time. But when the budget's tight, you're working. Mm. Um, so what did you think of the script for the movie or like like the um, the plot? Survivor was so big then. Yes. To me, too, that that idea of all these cameras watching people and then prank shows were big. I thought they made a mm-hmm. really nice statement about, you know, kind of the mean spiritedness. Yeah. And, and just, you know, sur- and getting Survivor in. And yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I thought I thought it was, you know. 
It, it was good. Shia had already shot holes. Yeah. That was a big year for Shia. He had Shaker Heights, I think, was also that yep, year. Yeah, and Project and Greenlight. Dumb yep. and, and Dumb and Dumber. Mm-hmm. They were all that year, yeah. Oh, three. The green light. Everyone looked oh. insane. He looked like the the voice of reason. I absolutely love his that season yeah. of Pro- Project Greenlight. Oh, it is so good. He was like the pro on that show. That launched him. You know, they could, in yeah. the industry, they saw that. That look at yeah. this kid. He's got it all together and professional guy. Yeah. yeah. Just knows how to go in and can, can make something i remember the girls coming up uh, during a scene two of, of susie and sarah and just going thank you because he had lifted something off the page that was already good and just made it he just put that thing on it oh yeah yeah mm-hmm. polishes it into gold you know if you were to read the character of lewis stevens on paper it could so easily be a one-dimensional simple wacky kid performance but like shia really was able to bring out like a bunch of different elements in this in this character and just made it so much more dimensional and look one of the reasons why we're still talking about the show today is because of what he helped bring to the table you know really do this stuff he's got a real gift yeah i just i want to say something that's really important when you're on a set the lead guy sets the whole tone for a show i've been on shows where You've got a grumpy actor who's the lead guy and or or he's not a social type of animal. You can feel the vibe yeah. Yeah. when you're lucky enough to get a really good actor who also is the mayor of the set and can mm. come on the set and go, hey, dude, how were, how was your weekend? Great. Oh, it just it just makes it a totally different experience. Monday, it's like, hey, how was the weekend? And high five. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And Christy, too, just coming in a good energy, you know, that. It just adds so much to a to a show. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. They had great chemistry too, Christy and, and Shia. Yeah. And, the, you know, a lot of their own personalities coming out. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yes. After your podcast, I did watch uh, one episode. I saw the uh, swap.com where they're in the mm-hmm. where yeah. he buys a gift. I teared up. Yeah. I teared up watching that thing. It was just watching these two kids brought their real personalities into the scene. And it was just great. It's so silly, and then it turns into a you know a really beautiful scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm excited for when my son's older, and I can just say, "Louis," <laughs> have it go full circle like that. Yeah, I'm gonna channel you then. I have a I have a 13 year old son now, so I'm yeah. actually I'm actually Steve <laughs> Stevens now. That's oh awesome. my gosh! And uh, you know, some of, well, I have a girl in college too, and two other kids in high school. But my son, I'll sometimes go, "Wow, he's." He's not really like Shia, but he's yeah. he's like a thirteen year old that you would create for that Disney show. Yeah. Huh. And I said, I'm glad he's come out this way. Yeah. <laughs> I used to I used to think, oh, I'd love a kid like like Shia. My kid has certain, you know, uh, certain attributes of him. Just being a thirteen year old kid. I I would when I first did the show, my daughter was born. My oldest daughter was born during um, Tech of a Hanukkah. Oh, oh, that's wow. cool. Donna had a lot to do because of all the makeup, so they went more and more oh, days. Oh, yeah. But I was done, and um, but uh, I I did feel in those first episodes I was married, but I didn't have a kid, and I said, "How am I going to play a father?" Yeah. Mm. yeah. You don't really have to know that as an actor, but I yeah. there was a slight uh, fraudulent feeling in me. I go like, "How am I going to have to, you know deal with these kids and whatever?" Whereas yeah. Donna yeah. had a kid exactly Shia's age. <laughs> And, you know, they even hung out every once in a while. That's oh, cool. Shia is more like her kid than her kid. <laughs> oh, my God. Funny. I know. I saw um, the director of Honey Boy posted um, that Donna and Stephen Anthony Lawrence just went to a screening of it not too long ago. Uh, the director quoted Donna, the like, saying that Donna had said that if she knew what was going on, she would have adopted Shia. <laughs> That was something Donna said. I don't wow. think Donna or I, if if that motel in that uh, in that movie was like that, we did not know that. I don't mm. think anyone would have known that. Yeah. yeah. And that's probably a testament to his professionalism again, you know? Yeah. Not carrying things on to set that his, his yeah. luggage or whatever baggage. Um, yeah. They saw it together, Stephen Lawrence and Don. Yeah, they were at the same screening. Yeah, Ooh, interesting. Yeah. yeah, there was a screening Shia was at, 
and I really wanted to go to it because I wanted to go to that and my kids had sports. So, oh uh, yeah, yeah. Darn sports. <laughs> yeah. And that, but I did, uh, t- I texted shy after the movie, you yeah. know, and just, he always just, he'll text back. He'll just go. Thanks pop. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Wow. That's that cool. That just warmed my heart so much. He'll go. Love you. G. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh that's, that's amazing. Funny. Yeah. I have not erased those texts. Oh, oh no, yeah. don't. Keep them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting choked up by that, too. I know. That's so nice. Oh, you know what I said, too, because of the movie, I said, I had texted him, and then I said, you know, Shy, knowing you and Jeff, if I had, you know, I, I didn't realize, and, you know, congratulations, I guess, for taking that and putting it into your art. And, and if, if you, you ever need, need someone to hold your hand, I'm here. <sighs> wow. Oh, no. That, you know, that his father wouldn't hold the hand. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're going to get me. <laughs> I'm going to get me. Yeah. <laughs> Moment yeah. of silence for that one. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, he, uh, he obviously uh, views you in uh, the highest regard just based off of I – mean, he named the, uh, the character Tom in the movie, yeah. which is, is uh, I think, great praise. The, the, the big brother, big thing. The yeah. mentor kind of guy. Yeah. yeah. They, he named him Tom, yeah. Because he, he said Tom, and I was like, is he referring to Tom Virtue? Do you, know? you think maybe he named him after Tom Grabowski? <laughs> that's probably what it was actually well because he's like a grown man so for a long time I thought is this is this guy actually the TV father like I was confused I didn't know because yeah. he he name dropped AJ in the movie yeah he did yeah you've got three people here who love Shia LaBeouf yeah, yes exactly <laughs> yeah. and you have the privilege of, of of knowing him too so I mean yeah uh, I feel I feel kind of connected through you right now but um, yes that's a yeah. really cool cool moment yeah that's yeah, it's amazing. Um, so you were actually this is kind of another thing on here, just kind of it was random, but you were in Transformers: Dark of the Moon. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but you never interacted with Shia in that movie. I I did the first day, and then the second day, and the last day of that movie. <laughs> and the first yeah. day, Shia was there, and we were shooting right down the street. From where even Stevens was. There's a big oh. studio there that has a massive, it's right near uh, Loyola University. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we can see Loyola University from where we used to work. And I yeah. said, oh, yeah, we're right down the street. Because I saw, and he goes, yep. He goes, this is, I, that, that's where it all started. That's how we oh. put it. And wow. they were recasting. I got an extra day because they, Megan Fox had, uh, you know, had, had the, had an encounter with uh, Michael Bay, the director. So she was let go and they were, we didn't shoot our scene. The scene I was supposed to shoot uh, because they were recasting the the new girl and Shia was doing, Shia was actually doing tests with her inside with Michael Bay to see because she had done Victoria's secret commercials for him. And then, you know, they hit it. The chemistry was there and that's how it, how it happened. So I got an extra day's work, but I talked to Shia and, um, that day, and I then I w- wondered afterwards. I said, "I wonder if he got me this job. You know, if he, like, why am I on this thing? I know I was <laughs> thinking about it. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, the way. Why am I on this movie? Why am yeah, I? Yeah, like I go. Did he get me the job? And I go, if he got me the job, I don't need his charity. <laughs> and, then, and then if he didn't get me the job, then what kind of person is he? So it like oh that. That God. was like going through my head. Then I saw him just this year, and then I got. I, I got to ask you, did I? did you get me that job on, uh, on transformers? And he goes, no dude. He goes, you know, you're, you're known in the industry, you know, whatever. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. So he, he just said, I, I got it on my own, but then I was going, Oh, cool. he, then he didn't go to bat for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, why didn't so, he get me the job? Yeah. Yeah. That's no, perfect. it's, it's oh, you know, that's that's funny. Perfect. seeing him that first day was, I hadn't seen him in a long time. Before yeah. That. yeah. And he, he had become, you know, gone really from being a boy to being a man. Oh, yeah. I used to r- run into him at Burbank because, uh, you know, I live in Burbank and he did for a while. And he was mm-hmm. with his posse. He'd always kind of be – and you'd see him kind of growing up. And then uh, I hadn't seen him in a while and then he was – suddenly you go, oh, my God, he's a – he's, you know, a different yeah. different guy yeah. right now. And, you know, yeah. been – you know, he's dating and he's doing all this stuff and he's in the tabloids. And, mm. 
it's crazy to watch as fans, so I can't even imagine, you know, yeah. having having known Knowing him, him yeah. like that. Yeah. That's cool. And by the way, the last day of that movie, I went down. They had to shoot at NASA because that's how Michael Bay oh. likes things. <laughs> so we had to go in the actual room where the Apollo mission or whatever that was. Really? Uh, yeah. Where that mission was to shoot in that room for that. And you've never seen a crew so tired in your life. You know, <laughs> four months I saw because the first day it's everybody's just working. The last day, everybody's like, oh, I got to get home. I, I need yeah. a vacation. <laughs> you know, it's such a grueling yeah. shoot, you know, massive wow. movie like that. Is there a NASA base in um, Playa, or Playa del Rey or wherever you said that no, was? No, it was down in uh, Houston. We flew to Houston. Oh, you went? Oh, wow. He wanted oh. to do it in the room where Holy the moon cow. mission took oh, place. Oh, wow. That's incredible. Yeah, and you say wow. you, you when you look at the place and you go, you could easily have built this on a sound stage. Yeah, yeah, easily. And, <laughs> no, uh, we're going to know, Houston. <laughs> right, yeah. he wanted the genuine thing, and wow. it's a it's That's a really cool. small room. You would think, you know, you see it on TV or on old footage, and yeah. it was a, you know, just a, a really basic room. And NASA now is deserted, or they, oh, back then Houston. even. Yeah, yeah, because the the. They're not doing missions and it's just, it's almost yeah. like a ghost town. I think they, yeah. this year might have gotten even rid of it. I don't know if they did. Really? I yeah, that, a lot of this stuff is at JPL in, in uh, Pasadena. Mm -hmm. I know, yeah. So I guess piggybacking off of, you know, clearly you have kept in touch with Shia to a degree. Um, is there anyone else that you've kept in touch with from the cast over the years? Um, that was a pretty common question. I see, I've seen Christy. Uh, here and there, like right when she was having her kid, she's got mm -hmm. two kids now, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. two daughters. Yeah. So maybe I haven't seen her in a year or so, or over a year. Mm -hmm. We do have these. Uh, I didn't go to the first one, but there was a cast and crew party, and yeah. that happened probably about five years. I'm not sure how many years ago. Mm -hmm. A lot of people came. Nick was big in putting that together, of oh, getting wow. everybody through Facebook and which I'm not on and stuff. So, but he contacted me and that was really great to see everyone. Oh, I'm you know, sure. At that. And then Nick himself, it's, it's funny. I didn't know Nick really well during the show. I'd done scenes with Nick, but I didn't really hang or talk to him in any depth. Then we did the mm. even Stevens movie and I, I just spent time with him and I go, he had, he was into real estate deals. He'd gone to college during really? the show. Yeah. Like I really got mm. to know him after the show was done Oh God! Uh, yeah. while we're doing the movie. And then later he got into some teaching, teaching of kids because of even Stevens. Wow. And he said, would you like to do this? And I, I got on board with that too. So I really got to know him way better after the show. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. He's sharp. He's all, you know, he's into real estate. He and Sean both were into like, real estate deals in this <laughs> it's interesting how do you how do you do this yeah, yeah. I, I wish they would do like a fan reunion type of thing you know like a panel like they do for some shows like a comic con thing yeah or like yeah, at a convention <laughs> or something that might be even a better way to do to to do our cast and uh, and honor the show yeah than even a reunion as much as i'd love to do a reunion thing yeah you uh, mean like a reboot or something a reboot yeah are you yeah. kidding yeah. Count me craze, in. Yeah. You don't want it to be done in an obligatory sense. You want it to have like the right uh, spirit behind it. You know, like I've seen so many reboots. They've tried to do fan service, but they also try to uh, rope in a new audience. But it's it should be it's for the fans, though. You know, at that if you're doing a new audience, you might as well do a new show. Yeah. In, in my opinion. But, you know, you never know when it's hit and miss. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes sometimes it, it, you know, it really could work. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. Because I've listened to you guys talk about this on your podcasts, but mm -hmm. if even if you did the most standard approach, which would be, you know, because Shia is probably, you know, yeah. he's he's yeah. kind of in the stratosphere, it might be hard to get him. That if you did Christy and she had a son or a daughter who was the Lewis, the one thing about that is you'd have to have another genius like Shia as a kid. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I'm not trying to say there isn't a kid out there. That's mm -hmm. like that, but the odds of 
finding someone yeah. and, 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 yeah. and I don't know, like I, I, I hate throwing the word disrespectful around, but it is just kind of like, oh yeah, we can just have another kid come in and be Lewis 2.0, like no problem. It's like, it's really not, it's not that simple. Well, then <laughs> it, yeah, not, it, messes you know. with, it messes with like the chemistry too, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, there's just that intangible quality that the show had that yeah. garnered all of its fans and you can't just yeah press com- copy and paste on that. The other thing is, you know, Warren Frost and Monique and and yeah. Tom Grabowski, Fred and and um, just all the it just all fell in place that there were yeah. there was such a huge support cast of kids that were yeah. also just as exceptional as yeah. the, as the lead actors. So yeah. that's why it would also feel weird if it were to come back without everybody. What you really have to do is use just you know a you know, this small blueprint of the past and then cast it with, with great people, you yeah. know, like bring in again, great new kids. And, um, at that point, it's not really an even Stevens reboot. It's just a new show right. at that point then, you know, right. Yeah. It's just, it's just trying to do a similar show again. Yeah. 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 Have you seen, have you watched any of Christy? She has her new show on YouTube. I haven't seen it, but I've noticed it in the, in the, in the media. Like I'll yeah. just, you know, yeah. like it comes up, you can see in the news and entertainment news and that kind of stuff. So. <clears throat> and she's industrious, you know, she's, uh, you know, cause she, she'll take her Kim possible thing where she'll go out and do autograph signings and that kind of yeah. thing. And she sets yep. up her booth and, you know, she really, she really kind of is a, is a great marketer. Mm. So, and yeah. how she got this show, it's just, you know, it's, you know, she's industrious. Yeah. I'm sure she's doing a lot of that herself. It's, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to go do a show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want her to have you on the show. That'd be cool. The throwback show. I'm there. Yeah. I don't know what I'd yeah. cook. I'll, I'll, su- I'll keep <laughs> suggesting it in the comments. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's all the questions I have on the f- form I did, other yeah. than the last one, which you've kind of already touched on, but it's just always nice to end on. It's just basically overall, what are your best takeaways from your time on Even Stevens, and how do you look back on the show today? Oh, uh, yeah, it was my, it was my favorite experience that I've had as a, you know, in, in, uh, in acting, in show business, I'd say mm-hmm. that just, it was a, just a great place to be. And that's what really becomes important. You could be on a, again, if you're on a really good show and there's a, there's a, not a great attitude going on or a great vibe. And sometimes you can have very successful shows that, you know, it's, these are shows that I haven't even been on, but I've heard from other people. They go, oh, that's a tough set, even though the show is, you know, one yeah. of the top shows. Mm. But that one just had, um, it was, I, I've never had so much fun. I was able to, I had just gotten married before the show. I had a kid on that show. To be part of something where it ran a couple of years as an actor, that I've had that experience. You know, I had done those shows for Bonnie and I did later the comeback and stuff like that and and secret life of the american teenager which was great right. too yeah. i did about 20 of those but other mm. than that a lot of times i'm just going in and guest starring or co-starring for for a day sometimes mm-hmm. or you know they'll, they'll shoot sometimes three scenes in a day and you don't get the experience of the of being a, a, a television family right yeah. and uh, even stevens was you know that's my television family and i love those people and um yeah, it's just uh, uh, it, that I have had that as an actor somewhere in my life. I wish that for every actor that they could have that kind of experience, you mm. know, in their career. Yeah, it was it was it was great. It was just fun. Everybody just, you know, every prop guy who made wacky stuff that we used and the art department that created all this stuff. Everyone was just, you know, uh there were there was a lot of ingenious thinking going on on that, and I say all you can see all of that. It really comes through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I, I uh, yeah, it was a a great time, a great time in my life, and I knew right when I finished. I remember we did an interview at the end, and I said this could be the one I, the, I you know, that I look back on and say it's probably going to be you know the best the best experience I had as an actor. Yeah. Uh, and not beyond an actor as a as an entertainer or someone in the entertainment industry it really right. goes beyond the acting it was it's the experience it was mm. really good that yeah. is so nice I, I wish they would put you guys on like a commentary for disney plus 
for some episodes, like get some of the cast together for just some extra content. It'd be great just to they did do a thing at the end of the show where yeah. we we all came in one by one and it's very different from what I told you today. You know, like mm. uh, I didn't know yeah. that sausage thing, you know, that was still in the can. It hadn't run. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, now I love that show. But yeah. uh, at that time, I wouldn't have even thought that, you know, like, what's your favorite episode? They'd ask stuff like that. Yeah. And the third season really hadn't aired. So I didn't, it, it, it you know, it's a, I would have a very different uh, attitude you know, yeah. about a lot of those questions they asked back then. And guys, you know, congratulations for doing this thing. And um, it's a pleasure to see two bright people like you who were affected by this show so positively. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. quite a compliment. Yeah, that is. Yeah. I mean, that's why I even contacted you because I said, yeah. I really, I want, it's like, I'm a fan of your podcast. <laughs> I would you. be even if I hadn't been on the show the way you guys do it. Yeah. Yeah. That was just, a, when Brittany said that, I was like, holy cow, that's really an honor. Yeah. It was amazing. I, yeah. I really enjoy, I love podcasts. You know, I'm in the car a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think I did all your podcasts like in three days or four days. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Oh, well, thank well, we you. We're going to have more too. And I don't know what we're going to do after the se- after we do all the episodes of the series. We'll- when we eventually get there. <laughs> and then ca- cast and crew stuff too. So this should keep lot. you well into your fifties. You guys are going to be busy. <laughs> yeah. I know. Well, hey. She's going to be busier than me, but yeah. Yeah. Keep keeping it alive. It's neat that, uh, that, that it's so uh, impacted your guys' lives. You know? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and we finally we're trying, we're getting, uh, people just didn't have a, uh, an outlet to watch it. Um, and now it's on Disney plus. So we're getting a lot more, uh, fans. Traction. Yeah, 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 definitely. And this is what we wanted. Cause we were, I mean, we were around before people really had it and we were watching like, you know, the, just like the quote unquote low quality like, files, yeah, low <laughs> the bootleg qualities, so to speak, on YouTube or whatever. Uh, but I'm wondering what if if this was Disney's giant plan, you know, master plan all along, because they do, they run a show, they'll run it for maybe two years in reruns, and then it's gone. Yeah. And uh, I wonder if all along they said, you know, one day we're going to have an outlet for for all these things, because the yeah. Disney Plus thing is goes back to Huge. the 40s, doesn't it? It's rabid, yeah. And there's a section on their website, on the Disney Plus site, where you can suggest shows that they don't have. So they're wow. really wanting people to, you know, dig in deep to what they remember when they were younger or, or whatever. Mm. Really open the vault. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure, sure they have. Do they have World of Color? I haven't looked carefully. I don't know if they have World of Color. Yeah, because there's like a thousand uh, different installments of that I know or something. Man. And well, it used yeah. to be the, the uncle Walt on a yeah. Sunday. And you know, when you had a colored TV, not every show was, was, uh, mm. was in color then. Yeah. Right. And to watch that. And then he came on every week and then no matter what it was, every kid watched that the same way kids yeah. of your generation watched the Disney channel. Yeah, exactly. It's something special about that. That's not really the case today with streaming and like everyone sort of watches, their own sort of thing but like as a kid we had disney and nickelodeon and like that was like pretty yep. much it so like yeah. we all watched these shows and then you come back the next day talk about it and everyone yep. watches the same thing yeah mm-hmm. my son watches everything on his phone and it's all it's not um uh situational comedy or yeah, yeah. he just watches youtubers and that kind of stuff and, yeah you know. mm-hmm. it's yeah it's definitely a generational it's thing it's a different uh, world now yeah it's crazy yeah yeah you guys are saying, oh, these kids. <laughs> but but anyway. I mean. Yeah. Thank you so much for yeah. just taking the time to you know, troubleshooting and like, you know, making sure yeah. that uh, everything is is uh, is good to go. And of course, like, again, for reaching out to us, it's just been so amazing. And, you know, as fans of the show as well, to be able to have this sort of connection and, and talk like this and, of course, you know, record it and be able to give it. To other fans of the show, um, it's re- we, I feel really mm-hmm. honored to be able to um, provide this sort of content. Like I don't, I I don't understand how I've gotten to the place where this is what we're doing. That like we're <laughs> providing yeah. uh, people with content like this, but it's just so great. And for you to agree to come on is just, it's awesome. Well, it, it reinvigorated my interest in those episodes because when uh, a lot of times I had a blank memory of the shows themselves mm-hmm. and then when you guys 
I go, oh yeah, now I remember that. And then I went to look at some. They were on YouTube. Yeah, it. it I had. I think of myself as I was on Even Stevens, and people will come up and, oh, you're on Even Stevens, but I don't think of the episodes in the the world of of the family and yeah. so it was really good to go wow yeah i remember that yeah that's awesome and, and uh maybe in the future after we compile more questions for you we can have you again or or do like a commentary where we watch an episode and you kind of just like an like uncle chuck or devil mountain or something i don't know i don't even know if that's possible how we would all yeah. be able to yeah. We all tee it up at the same time. Yeah, and, and then just, <laughs> yeah, talk about it. That'd be cool, too. Yeah. 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 That, that's a really good idea. If Disney won't have you come in and do a commentary, we'll do the commentary. That, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's what we'll do. Yeah, on that note, you should, you know, really get Sean and Dave. And I'm sure all those people yeah. would, would do Because they'll, yeah, they'll probably know a lot of the, the nitty gritty questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're yeah. they're entertaining. Like I really liked hanging with those writers. A lot of times, writers are are the fun ones to be around on a set. Even sometimes more than actors. Particularly great group of writers who were just entertaining to be around. Yeah, that's awesome. Definitely. Ah, oh, so I think that is everything. I think that just about wraps up this interview. Again, Tom, thank you so much for sitting down with us. Thank you. It's been absolutely amazing. We could not thank you enough yeah i mean just i mean what else is there to say i don't even know it's just been so crazy thank you Brittany, and thank you ethan you know it's it's been a pleasure talking to you about this stuff yeah yeah thank you guys so much for listening another massive thank you to tom virtue for coming on the podcast be sure to follow us on all the socials twitter facebook instagram even stevensrank.com send us an email leave a voicemail and we will see you guys in the next episode see you